Hello, I'm Steph from iDriver Classic and today I'm showing you a vehicle from the 1970s which probably needs no introduction. It's the fantastic Bond Bug. Now, whilst you've probably seen these out and about at car shows, you may not know too much about them. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you around the outside, take you up close and personal inside, and best of all, we're even going to go out for a test drive, and we're gonna cover off some of the history and technical aspects of the car. So first of all, before we take it out for a test drive or discover anything else, I'm gonna introduce you to my friend, TJ Dolan from Dolan Classics, who picked this car up today and is selling it. So over to you, TJ. Hello, this is TJ Dolan from Dolan Classics in Macclesfield in Cheshire and I'm here to introduce Steph and yourself to this lovely 1971 Bond Bug which has just arrived today. Uh, it's something I've always wanted to own um, and I remember I used to see one of these going to primary school when I was a kid. There was a local chap that used to drive one every day so we used to see these all the time. I've always wanted one. It's in mint condition and we're just going to finish it off. The Bond bug came at an interesting time. Reliant had just taken over Bond and design agency Ogle had been tasked with producing a sporty three-wheeler for a new and growing demographic, the younger generation. The brains behind the design agency was Tom Carran. Now he was the managing director of Ogle and he'd overseen things like the Rally Chopper and Reliant Cibita GTE amongst other products. So really he was a good safe set of hands to make the Bond bug really stand out in the market. Now the car was built as something new and Reliant sent it out into the world with the strap line, a fun car that does a serious job. This plucky three-wheeler could be driven on a motorcycle license which meant it was open to a lot of those younger demographic that hadn't passed her driving test and best of all for those on a lower income it could be taxed for only £10 a year. Now for reference if you were going to tax a car it was around £25 a year and also it was going to turn heads like no other car out there, which was absolutely a selling point for that younger generation. Although it was meant to be new and exciting, there was a degree of tried and tested which was applied to the vehicle. The mechanics were taken from the Regal, including the 700cc engine, which was paired with a new chassis, which they later used on the Robin. It was hydraulic drum brakes all round on all wheels and the suspension was leading arm front suspension with coil spring and telescopic damper and coil spring to rear, so slightly different to what you were getting on the Regal. Now at the time of the vehicle being sold, so 1971, it does change later on but we're going to talk about 1971 or we'd be here all day, the buying public could choose from the 700, the 700E and the 700ES. Now the ES, which is what we're testing today, had various extra bits not found on the 700, but also had a higher compression engine. So the 700 and 700E were listed as 29 brake horsepower, but the ES was listed as 31. Although this is stickered otherwise, it is 700 ES, and this is also probably a really good time to mention that one of TJ's first jobs on this is getting rid of that union flag on the roof. I won't tell you what I think of it, but I'm not a big fan. Now, made from 1970 to 1974, this is a car which many of you will recognise without me even having to tell you what it was today, but it was never actually a massive seller because they actually sold less than two and a half thousand. Now, although some people do dismiss the bug as a gimmicky little product of the 70s, I really hate when people do that because it does a complete disservice to the vehicle because it brought so much to the market. Because not only was it well-priced and cheap to tax, it provided value for money motoring and it was vaguely practical. It averaged around 200 miles between fill-ups, boasted a reasonable 42 miles per gallon and did 0 to 60 in 14.4 seconds and a top speed of over 70 miles per hour. So it's probably a lot faster than thought it was going to be when you started watching this video if you didn't know too much. However, keep things cheap, there were some cutbacks because although seat belts were standard fitment in all models at base price, the spare wheel was an optional extra in 1971 unless you went for that ES. Now it is worth noting the purchase price on these bugs was very budget conscious. It was £629. Now if you're wondering where this sits within the market at the time, it was only chipped by the Mini 850 which was £9 cheaper. Reliant badged the car as the bomb bug but all the literature from 1971 does signpost buyers to the Reliant Motor Company in Tamworth. 
which was where this particular vehicle was made. So some people might tell you these are made in Preston and the early ones from 1970 are, but the one we're testing today is a Tamworth car. Now one of the last things I'll tell you is, is the sales brochure did tweak the famous Henry Ford quote. You know the one I mean, any colour as long as it's black. And they went out with the strap line, any colour as long as it's tangerine. But here's something to use in a pub quiz, because although that is true, there were a few bugs which weren't orange. And these are the ones that Rothman cigarettes used as branded promotional vehicles. But the rest of them, they were just as orange as the one we're looking at today. Now there was never a car brought out after this to directly replace the Bond, but for those discerning three-wheel die-hard drivers, there was always the Robin, but I don't think it's quite as cool as this Bond bug. Now that's a little bit of history and trivia, let's jump into that driver's seat and walk you through the dash. We've had a look around the outside of the vehicle. I thought it was high time to bring you inside and see what was going on. Now it's all very simple inside one of these. And if you remember, we talked about on that walk around that everything pretty much, bar a few bits and pieces, was shared with that Regal. We can still see that Regal influence inside because this Speedo here centrally is from a Regal. And I would like to suggest that perhaps this has been stored in a garage because or a storage unit because usually these orange needles in the middle tend to be quite sun damaged and faded whereas this one is still very vivid to the left of that speedo you've got your fuel gauge and to the right of that you've got your temperature gauge your only two warning lights are ignition and oil and from then on in it's all still incredibly simple up the top here you've got your choke to the right you've got your horn and just down here, you've got your indicators. Now, neither TJ nor I have ever been in a Bond bug before. So this could be a quirk of this particular car or it could be a Bond bug thing. But listen to these indicators. I don't know if you heard those two tones there, but for me, I thought that was pretty cool. And they're coming down here. Somebody's very helpfully labeled up the control panel, which makes doing a review very easy. So over on our left-hand side, we've got the heater, the wipers, wash, well, pretty obvious, we've got wash, and then we've got our lights there as well. And of course, where you put your key. Now we've talked about how this car borrows parts from others. And another car that I've seen parts borrowed from is the Metro, would you believe? So this, um, and I'm sure they probably used it in something else before the Metro, it's probably used in the minis. And in fact, those headlights are used on Legro as well. So let me get to my point. This gear knob was in my Metro, but I think it's another thing. So this is definitely something borrowed from the BL parts bin. And those headlights were used on lots of different things. They were used on other Reliant cars. So I think they were used on Allegro's and they were definitely used on Metro's as well. So there is a little bit of BL influence coming in here as well. It's not just all that Regal stuff overpowering it. And that is pretty much everything we've got going on. But there's one thing that I want to mention to you about this car and classics in particular that I don't think we've ever talked about is the importance of a working fire extinguisher that you know how to use because bear in mind this is made from fiberglass and if things go wrong they're going to go wrong pretty quickly and it's not the easiest of cars to get out of in fact it's actually quite hard to get in and out of with everything up there and trying to open it back up so a fire extinguisher if you can put one in your classic I would recommend putting one in now that's everything we've got going on inside here. Remember, this is the ES, we talked about that. And with the ES, you get a few key bits and pieces. We talked about that cylinder head, but visuals that you might want to spot as we've gone along, we looked, um, when we were looking around, you probably spotted that spare wheel. But again, it's got the improved seats being the ES, and it should also have mud flaps. Now it doesn't have those, but the vehicle's from 1971. It's probably lost them along the way somewhere, and it's a very small detail. If you were to take this on, it would be a very quick job indeed to put those back on. Let's get the vehicle started up. You can hear what it sounds like, and then we're gonna do the, my favorite part of the video, which is taking you out on a drive so you can experience the vehicle for yourself. <laughs> you've probably 
probably guess this engine bay is a little bit cramped so there's no one to sit in the back and help me film it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to chat to you through my driving experience and i'm going to set the gopro up on the front so that you can see what i'm seeing as i drive and i'll chat away to you as i'm doing it so let's put this roof down which is harder than it looks um and i'll uh, i'll see you on the other side we are going to be heading off after this car so let's go now I've already had a little mini drive. Now something I will say is that life nowadays is very, very boring. If you're looking for a car that's going to take your heart rate from zero to 100 in a matter of seconds, maybe the bomb bug is exactly what you're looking for. Because the first time I went out in this, it was absolutely terrifying. But on the second drive, it's actually a little bit exhilarating. Even though we have had everything from cars to lorries overtaking us whilst we have been out on our test drive. And yes, we were doing the speed limit. Now the thing about the bomb bug is, it's, I imagine, a little bit of an acquired taste because when you drive it, you have to drive it very differently to anything you've perhaps driven before because the slightest nudge of the steering wheel, immediately you get a response. So I imagine if you oversteered in this, you could come unstuck relatively quickly. I don't think it would take too much to flip it over and end up in a bad situation. But once you get into the driving style of it, and once you start getting a little bit of confidence behind the wheel, that's when it turns from being scary and a bit of a chore into quite a fun day out. Because remember we talked about that these cars were designed for the younger market, which was very much a new growing market to be considered. And it's definitely more fun than taking out one of your standard reliance, something like a Robin or a Regal for example. Now, as you come round and you start to get used to that handling, it is very, it's number one, very quick, because of course you can go from zero to 60 in I think 14.4 seconds. And you've got a top speed of something, I think it's around 76 miles per hour. So it's not a slow coach out on the roads, but the only problem is, is as you come out, and you probably wouldn't experience this if you just saw one at a show, but you might find out if you chat to an owner, is that other drivers don't take you very seriously. So even though we're doing the speed limit, everyone sees it as a bit of a game to overtake the car that just looks like a giant, aluminous block of old cheese. Now, would I drive one of these on the regular myself? I'm not entirely sure because the first time I took it out, I would have said to you, absolutely not, I think it's really scary. But now that I'm on my second drive, I'm starting to find the fun in the bomb bug. Transmission wise, it's very easy to change gear. You've got full synchro on the box and all of that just feels completely, you feel completely at ease in terms of all of that. And once you get used to that handling, all of that feels second nature. The only thing that really detracts from it is it does take a little while to get used to the fact that everything is very close to you inside and the fact that if you are safety conscious you're probably going to struggle because you are essentially just in a tiny little fiberglass box which is painted bright orange and other road users don't give you that much respect but if you can chuck all of that out the window and you want to add a bit of excitement into your life then the bomb bug ticks all the boxes. It can keep up with modern traffic. It handles really well once you get used to it. And it'll be probably be the only one you'll see in a car park. So no matter where you park, you're probably never gonna get lost. Now that's it, that was kind of it from me today. It's been a bit of a funny test drive because I didn't really know what to expect. And I had to film this two or three times before I felt comfortable enough to chat to you as I drove. I'm going to hand the keys back to TJ. What an exciting first day to be owning this car and uh, getting to grips with it. 
And if it is a car that you've had on your wish list for ages and you're looking for a great example, why not give TJ a call? The details for Dolan Classics are in the description box below. But until next Sunday, when we're doing something very different, we're going out on a bit of an adventure. Take care and drive safely. Thank <laughs> you.